First story is titled, Am I the a-hole for not letting my mother-in-law host an online memorial service for my 26 female miscarriage? I recently miscarried at 12 weeks. The pregnancy wasn't planned, but my husband and I were planning on keeping it as we are both financially secure enough to have a child. My husband was disappointed, but my mother-in-law is devastated. She has been inconsolable and has called me multiple times, crying. The issue is that I'm not upset about it at all. I really didn't have enough time to get attached to the idea of being pregnant, as I only knew for sure about three weeks before the miscarriage. I've listened to her whenever she needs, but she can't understand why I'm not as upset as her. The last straw came when my husband casually brought up a Zoom call mother-in-law is organizing for the baby's memorial. We're still in lockdown, so in person is out of the question, thank God. She wants to invite a lot of their large, close-knit family. Hubby assumed that she'd talk to me about it and phoned her to tell her she needed to take a step back. She blew up at him and called me cold and unfeeling and asked what mother would mourn the loss of their child. In my eyes, I'm not a mother and I don't have a child. I'm a scared blob of cells. To me, it's the equivalent of crying over my period every month. I understand not everyone feels like this and I want to be sympathetic, but a memorial is way beyond my comfort zone. I refuse to let it go ahead and she's been radio silent since. Husband is beyond stressed already from dealing with her and I think her grieving needs to take a backseat for a while. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Since some people ask for info, mother-in-law had fertility issues. Husband is her only child and she dealt with a lot of early and late-term miscarriages. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole and your mother-in-law is weird. At 12 weeks, a lot of couples haven't even told family about the pregnancy yet, as miscarriages are so common in the first trimester. Plenty of women miscarry without ever knowing they were pregnant. Having a memorial service for a 12-week pregnancy is not a thing. I'm sorry you and your husband are having to deal with this. Glad you're doing okay. When slash if you get pregnant again, you might want to keep the information yourselves until 6 weeks or so. Yeah, we stupidly let her know as soon as we did. She knew for about three weeks and had already started buying baby items. Lesson learned for sure. Not stupid. You had no way of knowing she would react this way. Not at A-Hall. I was going for no A-Halls here until she insulted you for not grieving like she wants you to. Yeah, that conversation was beyond rude. I don't think she knows I heard it though. Not at A-Hall. I get that she wanted to be a grandma. But holy cow, she's imposing something on you that you don't want. You had not bonded to the baby at all yet. Hosting a memorial against your will is downright creepy. It's good your husband is backing you up. Yep, she needs to take a step back. Not day hall she's out of line. OP, I say this gently. You have a slight husband problem too. He really needs to take the lead at healthy boundary setting with his mom. I am grateful he called her to tell her step back. I think this is a good time for you to talk privately with him on your mutual boundaries with her. But this is a good time for you and him to really look at the roles of her. At a minimum, she is now completely on the outside of any information until you are ready to share. Lastly, sorry this is happening. That's intense. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for saying I wish my mom wasn't autistic? So my 16 female mom is autistic. She does a lot of little things that annoy me even though I know she can't help it. Like she'll come into my room and scream at me if everything's not organized. And by organized, she means every book in my bookshelf must be in color-coded order. And every single piece of clothing needs to be exactly in its place in my dresser. And I can't move anything or redecorate my room because it freaks her out. So it's been the same since I was 10. Also, she will say kind of mean things to me like, You've been gaining a lot of weight recently, which I know isn't mean to make me feel bad, but it still does. Also, she'll come into my room while I'm on a Zoom class and start telling me about everything she's thinking about while I'm trying to focus. If I ever was to tell her the things she does that annoy me, she's call me an ableist and say I was forcing her to mask in her own home and she thought she raised me better than that, so I usually don't bother trying. I try to talk to my dad about it sometimes, but he always uses himself as an excuse. And he says that he loves her, so he's able to look past all the little things she does that may be weird. But like, he chose to be with her, but I just happened to be born into this family. Yesterday, I was in the middle of a really important test on Zoom. 
and she came in and started telling me about headphones and how she likes them or something. I was just nodding and saying, uh-huh, and she was like, are you even listening to me? I told her I was in the middle of a test, and she said that I know she needs to talk about these things, so I need to listen. I was trying to listen and do my test at the same time, but it was hard, and I ended up getting 10 points off for turning it in late. So now I have a 75 rather than an 85. Later yesterday, I was talking to my friend on FaceTime. In middle school, me and this friend didn't like each other, but we became friends again last year. But my mom came into my room and asked who I was talking to, and I told her my friend's name, and she said loudly, I thought you hated her. I got really annoyed and tried to explain to my friend that I said that three years ago. Luckily, my friend understood, but I'm still really annoyed at my mom for saying that. She keeps saying that it doesn't matter because my friend wasn't mad, and I shouldn't be mad at her because I know it's hard for her to forget things because of her autism. She's saying I should apologize to her for getting mad at her over something she can't control. My dad says that I'm being ableist. But like, I'm not saying autistic people shouldn't have kids or anything. I'm just saying that you should make sure you're able to have kids before you do because I feel like my mom often forgets that I'm the child in this relationship. My parents still think I'm the a-hole and I haven't spoken to them all morning. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Being autistic doesn't excuse the things your mom is doing. It may explain some of them, but they aren't excuses. Your mom is an adult, and I'm assuming she's known about her autism for a long time. It is her responsibility to handle her behavior, and if she can't, she needs to speak to a professional who can help her. Also, I don't see in your story where you said you wished she wasn't autistic. I think a more accurate thing to say is, I don't want you to treat me this way. It is possible to be a decent person with autism, and frankly, some of this seems more like a personality problem that she's using autism to hide behind. I don't know all that much about autism. Can somebody help me out here? Most of this doesn't sound like autism to me. It sounds like boundary stumping by someone who has been enabled their whole life with a side of autism. For example, I don't understand why an autistic person wouldn't understand these are my school hours, I cannot talk from 8 to 2. That sounds like a super clean routine that would be easy to establish, as long as the person wasn't just a boundary stumper. I'm autistic. I would never behave like your mom does. Your mom is an a-hole, and so is your dad. He's looking past her quirks and ignoring that she is in fact abusing you. Shouting at you for not having your bookshelf in order? Not okay. Sabotaging your test? Not okay. I'm actually kind of concerned, because she does not behave like a functioning adult should. Do you have a school counselor you can talk to about this? Her diagnosis is 100% irrelevant. She's screaming at you for invalid reasons. She's sabotaging your schoolwork and potentially your health and your future. If she wants to be a good mom, she'll take the help she needs to be that. Not a hole. Next story is titled, Am I a hole for telling my daughter it's her fault that her babysitter quit? I have three kids, six, four, and nearly a year old. When I was pregnant with my youngest, I hired a sitter to pick the two up from school and watch them. We really liked her and appreciated her. My eldest loved her babysitter, but she began to develop a huge attitude. I know one of her friends has a nanny who she's basically allowed to boss around with little consequence. We told my daughter that her sitter is in charge and she's to respect her, not demand things of her. A few months ago, the sitter asked my daughter to grab the baby's diaper bag and my daughter sassed back saying, You can't tell me what to do. I'm the boss of you. The sitter told me that night and I immediately addressed it in front of the sitter. I told my daughter that was not acceptable. She's not a boss of anyone, and I took away her TV privilege for a week. It happened again just a month later, and I had a much sterner talk with her, took away more privileges. Both times I made her verbally apologize and write a note of apology to her sitter. The sitter accepted it, but I could tell she was losing patience. I didn't blame her and ended up giving her a raise out of guilt. I also stopped arranging playdates for her and a friend who treated her nanny terribly. They don't go to the same school, so they don't see each other at all anymore. I'll add I did try talking with my daughter calmly and asking why she felt that this was okay. She'd say, we pay her, I'm her boss. And I said, no, that's not true. I said she's hired to take care of her and deserved respect. My daughter would always seem to understand. Well, things came to a head a few weeks ago. My daughter was acting up, 
Sitter had tried several de-escalation tactics, but finally told her to go have quiet time in her room. My daughter screamed in her face, I'm the boss of you, I'll get you fired. The sitter calmly picked up the phone and called me. We have cameras in our house, which she knew about, and told me to come home immediately. Upon arrival, she quit. Nothing I said or did could make her stay, and I understood. I was furious with my daughter and let her have it. She had several things taken away from her, and she didn't do anything remotely fun until recently. This whole thing has left us in the bind. Luckily, the school that my younger two go to is open later, so I can pick them up when I get off work. I have been scrambling to find a new sitter, but in the meantime, I got my daughter into an after-school program. Because there's no more sitter, there's no one to take her to her swim class. She's been complaining that she can't do it anymore, and I told her that it's her own fault. She's the reason why her sitter quit, and until I can find someone new, she won't get to do the fun activities that her sitter took her to. My husband agrees that there's nothing we can do, but thinks I was far too harsh with our daughter, saying she's only six. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Her actions impacted someone enough to make them quit a job they were being paid to do. She has soiled her reputation as word spreads fast within the babysitter community if a child treats her caregiver like that. I imagine this wasn't three isolated events, but more like it was happening way more frequently. But those three times were when babysitter was at her last straw. The consequences before didn't work, and now the impact of her actions is bothering her. She is old enough to know now that her actions had consequences, and this is why she can't go to her fun activities. I definitely agree with this. Your daughter needs to learn the consequences of her actions. Many people in the sub seem to lack this skill, which, oh man, you wouldn't believe how many people loathe them. OP, you weren't being harsh. Instead, you were far better than most people in this sub. Definitely a great job at giving your daughter stern boundaries to not let her grow up spoiled. She is a six-year-old. Surely, she should learn about respecting other people now? I'm slightly surprised she doesn't have heavier punishment. So this is definitely a fair enough consequence. And it wasn't like you immediately yelled at your daughter. You gave her several chances, which she has repeatedly broken. Kudos to the babysitter as well. She took it like a champ instead of yelling at your daughter. Impressive. Not a day haul. Not day haul. Personally, I think pointing out that not being able to go swim is a direct result of not having a sitter. And that not having a sitter is a result of her behavior is a good example of natural consequences. And when you get a new sitter, I would carefully go over appropriate behavior again. I would want to have a plan with a new sitter for if she tries the same tactics again. Edit. I'm editing to acknowledge this is unpopular on the sub, but is backed by studies on child development and psychology, so I'm not ashamed that my opinion is deemed wrong here. You're the a -hole. Your kid is six. Sure, they are old enough to understand consequences, but nothing that your child did was developmentally inappropriate for age, nor were they things that couldn't have been dealt with in a patient manner. Having kids tests your nerves. I've got a nine-year-old and seven-year-old. It doesn't get easier. It gets only harder. Saying this is all your fault, you're a brat, is absolutely not the way to approach this. Maybe sit down, apologize for how you spoke to her. Yes, apologize. Apologizing to kids when you are wrong is incredibly important and teaches personal responsibility and the ability to admit they were wrong in the future and explain what you really meant. Tell your six-year-old, when she treats people bad and makes them feel bad, they might not want to be around her and that the way she treated her babysitter made her feel bad. Cite specific examples. Remember when you said this? Remember when you did this? Adding, once your child acknowledges she did something wrong and she made a sitter feel bad, then bring up missing out on swimming as a consequence of that because now she has to go to aftercare elsewhere. And that when you do find a new sitter, she can go back to swimming. But she's going to have to try really hard and treat her new babysitter the way she wants people to treat her so she doesn't miss out on it anymore. Instill empathy instead of shaming your child while still framing what happened as a consequence of how she acted. I will always recommend reading and research on child development. Your daughter is old enough to understand, but she is not old enough to be shamed into compliance without lasting psychological effects. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for arguing against dropping the step from titles in my step family? I, 16 male, live with my dad, step mom, step siblings, 10 female and 7 male, and half brother, 2 male. My dad and step mom got married 7 years ago. Seven male was an infant at the time. 
They never wanted to consider us a step family. That's how I've always felt. Her kids feel different because they were younger and don't remember life without me and my dad. While I remember life without them clearly. I also think they love the idea, while I just don't feel that way about them. I don't hate them, but I'm not too close to any of them except my half-brother. He's in a tight spot since seven male dislikes him for taking the spot of the baby, and ten female wanted a sister, so has no interest, and they had my mom walk out on me, so I know what it's like to be in a weird spot, so I have bonded with him. I usually call him a brother. But I added half around my step family because it would hurt their feelings more if I called him brother, but used the step for them. Anyway, my dad and stepmom sat me down and asked me to consider the way things could be and stuff if I just stop adding step the whole time and call them mom slash brother slash sister. I said I wasn't going to do that. My dad and I ended up getting heated because he said it was time to accept them as just family, while I told him he had to accept I felt different to the rest of them. He told me it was mean-spirited to keep it up after so many years when I know it upsets my step-siblings and him and my stepmom. He told me I'm almost an adult and should be willing to put the feelings of others into consideration if not first, because kids. I told him he can't tell me how to feel, and he called me a jerk. I want to know, am I the a-hole for this? Not the a-hole. You have to consider their feelings, but they don't have to consider yours. Ah, the double standards are strong in your family. Plus, your dad calling you a jerk. Wow, he sound lovely to be around. Right? What kind of dad uses language like that with their teenage son? They need to grow the hell up and get over it. Not they, Alopi. Never let people blame you for their own insecurities or issues. Not they, Hal. The removal of such titles only come with time, and it is entirely up to the individual. In this case, you. And when that is, or if it even happens at all, the only people allowing these titles to strain your relationships are them. They're attempting to bulldoze over your feelings and discomfort to give them the sense of a completed whole family unit, when the reality is that can be achieved without it, especially if they simply look into account how you feel about it. There is nothing wrong with being closer to one than the others. In large families, whether blood-related fool or not, it happens. I am one of seven kids, so it definitely happens, and that is perfectly okay. You cannot force yourself to build stronger bonds with them, not when they are pressuring you, and many of them still sound so young. There is time, but then again, if it never worked out that way and you still felt the same, that is perfectly okay too. They are in the wrong here, attempting to pressure you into doing slash behaving a certain way to appease them, rather than attempting to work through that with you as a family. Take care of yourself and good luck. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.